uh, case 21 is going to be a nodule that um, uh, is often clinically they're either thought to be a cyst or sometimes because they have a kind of chalky white appearance um, the, the dermatologist might recognize what it is uh, if they're close enough to the skin surface. So this is an example of pilomatricoma or pilomatrixoma. I like how it looks better with the X when you write it, but it's easier to say when you put a C in and say pilomatricoma. Both ways are totally accurate. This is a benign hair follicle tumor and it um, uh, is recapitulating what happens in the hair root or hair bulb. So what you're going to get is um, uh, blue basaloid matricle cells in some cases, and then those will um, uh, uh, transition into sheets of, of uh, keratinocytes that are starting to uh, die and have dissolving of their nuclei. So they leave just a shadow of the sheet of keratinocytes. So we call these shadow cells or ghost cells. You can see the shape here. There are lots of little keratinocytes arranged in a sheet, but they don't have any nuclei. They're just pink. The keratin is left, but the cells are dead and the nuclei are gone. And uh, what's happening is just like the normal hair follicle, the blue basaloid cells at the base produce keratinocytes that eventually die and get packed together, the keratin's packed together into a hair shaft, and that's how our hair grows. That's a normal, it's a normal process. The keratinocytes are supposed to die. So the same thing is kind of happening, but in a much more disorganized, haphazard way in this benign hair follicle neoplasm, pilomatricoma, okay? In this case, we don't see any blue basaloid cells. Let me look around at low power. All we see are the ghost cells and the variable reactions to those ghost cells, okay? So some cases have abundant blue basaloid cells and a lot of mitoses and look very scary, but they're totally benign. Um, but it's good to go and familiarize yourself with that. I've got some uh, whole slide examples and videos about that on Kiko. But a lot more often what I see is this kind of pilometricoma, where we just have the ghost cells and then they're all arranged in disorganized fragments. They're a nodule from low power that's usually pretty circumscribed. And then at closer look, haphazard, uh, mishmashed, mi rearranged, or I'm sorry, uh, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, haphazardly arranged or mishmashed, some people would say, um, fragments of um, uh, ghost keratinocytes, dead keratinocytes with variable amounts of calcification. Calcification is very common in pilometricoma. Sometimes it's focal. Sometimes it just starts to make like little rings of calcium around the sheets of dead keratinocyte ghost cells or shadow cells. So you can tell the, the shadow cells, which normally look kind of a pink or orange, or as some of my residents like to say, they like to say peachy pilometricoma because it has a kind of peach, orangey pink peach color. And I like that. The keratin actually really does often have this kind of peach color. I don't think I was ever taught that, but my... Uh, my derm residents recently, a couple of them taught me that, and I'm appreciative because I think that's a beautiful uh, terminology. So peachy pink uh, pilometricoma, and then that pink color starts to turn more and more blue and purple as calcium deposits on this dead keratin and eventually makes thick, fragmented, cracked um, aggregates of calcification. And sometimes that can even progress all the way to metaplastic ossification or heterotopic bone formation, okay? The reason it's good to know that about this calcification or ossification is when it's abundant, um, uh, beginners uh, who have not seen this phenomenon before will look at this and think calcinosis cutis or tumoral calcinosis because it's islands or pools of fragmented calcification with fibrosis and oftentimes you'll get some giant cell histiocyte granulomatous type reaction around these islands, okay? And so you'll think calcinosis cutis. The key here in telling this apart from calcinosis cutis is to go down and find those islands uh, or those sheets of, of uh, shadow cells or ghost cells, the keratin content, okay? That's the key. Once I see those, this is not calcinosis cutis. This is a calcified pilometricoma, okay? And or if you find sheets of blue basaloid cells with some mitoses, um, that would also be evidence that we're dealing with a pilometricoma that's calcified. I don't think this case has bone. I have some other videos that show examples of that online. But if you have abundant bone, you might think it's an osteoma cutis. Again, if you find blue basaloid cells or you find the peachy pink um, sheets of ghost shadow cells, then you know it's actually a pilometricoma with uh, bone formation. Um, and oftentimes the ones with bone also have calcification in them. And um, here's some area of the giant cell reaction. 
pretty much all pilomatricomas seem to rupture and get disorganized fragments. And that usually in all the spilled keratin contents into the dermis, the dermis does not like keratin to be loose. It's okay to be inside a cyst. It's okay to be in a hair follicle. It's okay to be on the skin surface. But once it gets loose in the dermis, it is contacting naked dermal collagen. The dermis reacts with, the immune system reacts with a kind of explosive mixture of granulomatous response. And, and you'll get histiocytes, granulomas, giant cell reaction all around the keratin and fibrosis too. Okay. So that's why a ruptured cyst um, will provoke such uh, inflammatory response and granuloma formation because the dermis and the immune system do not like free keratin for some reason, even though I don't know why the keratin's harmless. And the same phenomenon happens when you get a polymatricoma. This one has actually very little granulomous response. Some of them have a lot of granuloma. And the other thing I wanted to point out is that from low power, they're usually circumscribed. But when you get a fragmented uh, biopsy of a pilometricoma or a punch biopsy of pilometricoma, it has the appearance of infiltration because it's so haphazard. And so especially when you get that plus blue basal it cells, people start getting worried that it's malignant. And especially when you see mitotic activity. Again, this case does not show that, but some cases do. And it's important to see some examples like that and to recognize that those end up almost always being benign. Um, there is a malignant variant of pilometricoma called a matrical carcinoma or a malignant pilometricoma or various other names. Those usually have marked atypia, atypical mitosis. Uh, that's the thing I'm looking for. They usually look obviously malignant, uh, not like pilometricoma. Usually they have focal pilometrical areas, but look really like a malignant high-grade tumor in my experience. I have only rarely seen them that looked like pilometricoma at close up, but because of clinical or because of extensive infiltration away from the main mass on excision, that it was clear that they were malignant. But, but usually they look obviously ugly in my experience microscopically. In any case, that's more detail than you need. This case, no one would ever confuse, I think, with malignancy because there's like no viable cells here. Um, and then, oh yeah, also you can get, there's some slit-like keratin spaces. Um, cholesterol granulomas look very similar to keratin granulomas to me. I'm not sure which this is, but I would vote that it's probably a keratin granuloma because we have all this free keratin around. So there you go. Calcified pilometricoma.